windows. Lock your doors. Keep your loved ones near. Time is running out. It's here for... Thanks for joining us. We're Ear for Fear, and this is Donovan. And I'm Rick, and today we're going to be talking about 1992's Brain Dead, also known as Dead Alive. This movie is about Lionel. Um, actually, we don't start with Lionel, do we? We actually start with a, uh, I don't know what you would call this guy. We'll call him your Indiana Jones type explorer. Um, <laughs> very white. Uh in in a decidedly not white part of the world um and uh, we start in media res so we are following this gentleman and a guy he hired um with a what is essentially a crate again very indiana jones-esque here because they've got it in like those poles you know so it's lifting the box up they're running away from some something uh they're carrying something precious uh, things go awry. Um, it turns out, like in in this in this crate is a uh, is a is a rat monkey, and this rat monkey is essentially a, an arbiter of disease, uh, a zombie type disease. He gets bit. <laughs> he gets bit on his hand. I forget the exact words they say, but they're essentially saying he's infected. They chop off his hand. Um, it turns out he has another one higher up on his other arm. They chop off his arm. Turns out this monkey uh, bit him on the forehead, so they they chop his head. Um, this is a great opening. Um, further on in the movie, we go meet our actual characters, Lionel and uh, Paquita. Is that her name? Or am I getting this way wrong? It is? Okay. Um, we start with their misadventures and love. There's a prophecy around Lionel and uh, their romance. Um, he's going to be followed by death. And that turns out to be very true. When they go on a date to the zoo, uh, they meet this rat monkey that was stolen from this uh, non-named island. Uh, the, the, the mom gets infected, and then a bunch of crazy stuff happens from there. That is the gist of the movie, and this movie is fantastic. And I'm really happy to be talking about it. So, yeah. What'd you think? You liked it. I love this movie. This movie's. I'm so happy to be talking about a movie that I, that I really loved, that I really loved. <laughs> um, look, we talked about Happy Birthday to Me, a movie that uh, I will admit uh, leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Um, and then we talked about uh, Night of the Creeps, a movie that is trying to do what this movie does with a plum. Um, I'll give credit where credit is due. Night of the Creeps does do some things pretty well. I, I did say that that movie had a lot of good ideas. Uh, this movie, uh, the movie we're talking about today, Dead Alive, um, has a lot of good ideas. In fact, it's jam-packed with a lot of good ideas, but it also executes them very, very well. And from the first scene in this movie, I was having a lot of fun. I was cringing from all the gross-out stuff that was happening, and I knew exactly what I was getting into. And I'm so happy that the movie delivered on those first 10 minutes. I love this movie. Um, I, this is the first time I've seen this movie. Um, so this is a vanilla reaction for <laughs> sure. So if I want rewatch this movie, who knows? Um, but from what I understand, uh, dad, you've actually seen this movie before. Yeah. I saw it a while back. Um, I mean, it's, it's older for sure. Um, you know, we, we uh, Peter Jackson directed it, which is, I don't know if it's strange is the word, but it's, it's strange, but it's not strange because I mean, I think you could. You know, this was obviously prior to, you know, Lord of the Rings and all the other stuff he did. But, you know, uh, I, I liked it. I liked it when I watched it years ago. I don't know when it was. Um, but revisiting it, I kind of forgot a lot of the stuff that happened. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 funny. It's campy. It's campy, similar to Night of the Creeps, but not. Um yeah, like you were saying, um, Night of the Creeps did some things that just 
it didn't uh it didn't work I you know agree. they had some great ideas and like we well, like we chatted about before i enjoy night of the creeps this is this is this is cheesy this is campy but more slapstick and definitely a lot more gore i mean very very gory um sometimes over the top but uh but kind of good over the top i would say night of the creeps that movie is constantly winking at you like hey look at what we're doing here um can't you see this is a really funny idea whereas um dead alive is just so concerned of jam packing uh the frame and every single scene with just as much weird shit as it can fit in <laughs> that it's 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 too preoccupied doing that to wink at you you know what i'm saying i think yeah. that's the difference between out of the creeps yeah uh, Night of the Creeps also pats itself on the back a lot. This movie's not doing that. Again, it's too busy to do that. Yeah, N- Night of the Creeps was was a, 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 at times during the movie trying too hard. We, you know, we knew what they were trying to 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 do and the message they were trying to to say and 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 all the other stuff they were kind of inserting in. Um, that that didn't happen here. You know, there was no need for any of that. You know, but uh, but I will say this: um, the 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 island was actually called Skull Island. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Wait, so, so so at the beginning in in uh, at the very beginning when they're 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 uh, they're going through like the the caves or whatever the rocks, it it says I think it's it was in white letters and it said something about Skull Island. Oh, now, dude, now which is uh, my bad. Yeah. So <laughs> so interesting about that. Uh, uh peter jackson is a huge king kong fan yeah so skull island was his his kind of paying paying homage to to king kong which is funny because in 2005 he ended up <laughs> directing directing king kong the yeah, one that, with the one with jack black and that's so which cool. was actually a pretty good movie but i thought that was uh kind of cool um you know I, I love when when they do little little stuff like that the difference here is see he just slid that in uh, in night of the creeps they they hit us over the head with it a million times you I, know? I wonder and and i know peter jackson co-wrote this movie with a few other people yeah, yeah. Um, i'm wondering if that is intentionally on their part setting this in the king kong universe <laughs> i mean the, the yeah. fact that like the king kong universe has these crazy monsters in it you True. know and dinosaurs yeah. and stuff yeah. like would make sense for a rat monkey that <laughs> infects people and like with like a zombie type disease that'd be so perfect this makes the movie better for me yeah yeah and it was funny it was like uh because it had been so long since i i don't even remember when i saw this this was years ago um and so re-watching this and then watching that intro and and uh you know the, the yeah the the they're getting bit and scratched and all of a sudden they're chopping everything off and then that I loved I loved the quick uh, the quick intro as to the name of the movie I loved it it, just, it was like a throwback to old you know old movies that was cool and then we're and then we're in this this you know this town and I, so uh, immediately I don't know if you caught on to this but I felt this had a this had a a Tim Burton feel to it, but at a, I don't know, a, a cheaper scale. Does that make sense? The, the town, the, the colors, the, you know, the, the, the simplicity of it, uh, the muted colors. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that, but it, it had that, it had that feel like immediately for me. Are you talking specifically like early Tim Burton? Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. Yes. Not more recent, but so basically but late eighties, early nineties, Tim Burton. Yes. Yeah. yeah um it's funny you mentioned that uh this was a long time ago sometime i think last year i was listening to uh, blank checks podcast um and they were doing a whole series on tim burton so i ended up re-watching some of tim burton's movies yeah and tim burton really likes to tell his movies almost like a fairy tale he likes a yeah. floaty camera he likes to um sort of drop you like almost literally drop you into his worlds he does that in beetlejuice um yes that's the one that i think of when it comes like to the most analogous to the movie we were watched for this, for, for you know, Dead Alive. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think you're totally right. Um, the fact that Peter Jackson uh, flies the camera into the world is totally Tim Burton. Mm-hmm. He's dropping us in this world. Um, the the town just it 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 was weird. Like the town almost seemed. 
like not real to me, even yeah. though those those uh, those those cars that were those those what were yes those? the trolleys those they look trolleys looked, they look they, stop motion or yes, something. but those I believe were real. They looked they looked like they were stop motion or something, but or maybe they were. You know what uh, I thought it was like they had a real shot of the city. And they were trying to do like a trolley that was representative of 1950 San Francisco or something. Yeah, yeah. And then so they just had a model of the trolleys. That had to be the case. Because, <laughs> but I don't because know. Because they showed the trolley several times and I'm like, there is no way that's a real trolley. But the town itself looked like, a, like a, you know, it looked real. And I'm like, it almost, you know, you know what the trolley reminded me of? It reminded me of... Uh, Mr. Ro- Mr. Uh, Mr. Rogers neighborhood, yeah. the little trolley of that. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of that. And hell, who knows? Maybe Peter Jackson, maybe that was intentional. But but yeah, but the town, even some of the music, did it not sound like Danny Elfman? Like not as good as Danny Elfman, but like whoever did the music was like, okay, I'm influenced by Danny Elfman and here you go. Some of the music to me felt that way. I'm sorry to say, I don't remember any of the music. And oh, I watched yeah. this movie today. No, I definitely, definitely when you see the town for the first time towards the end. Um, oh, my God. It, it, it reminded me of Danny Elfman. In fact, I I looked it up because I'm, I'm like, I know Danny Elfman did do this, but I was curious on who it was. It sounded it sounded Danny Elfman ish. You know, of course, he, he's on a he's on a, you know, a bigger scale, you know, but this kind of sounded like it. And I I don't know if it was done on purpose. I'm curious by that. So the, 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 but you know, we have uh so 1957. Yeah. yeah, 19, and yeah. I, I love a movie that's for me is a period piece because 1992 is a year after I was born. I was born in 1991. So just going back to that time, I was like, oh yeah, I, I don't really remember this, but I kind of vaguely remember this. Oh, but we're not actually doing that. We're going back <laughs> another 40 ish years and going to 1957. I yeah. don't know why I always love that, but I always love it when, uh, a time that's older for me goes back in time again to a time that was older for them. Yeah. I always love that kind of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, this is a period movie. <laughs> you know what's you know what's funny? And I didn't even think about this. Uh Night of the Creeps did that. They went back to the 50s and yeah. then they went forward to the 80s. Um, this doesn't do it just goes back to the 50s and it stays there. But I think it's kind of interesting. Um this that, movie, that definitely wasn't was something we planned, but now I'm thinking about it. Um this movie doesn't feel like it, it was placed in the nineteen fifties. It could have been taken place at like any time, basically. It, it, it did. It it did. And you know it's it, what's what's funny is is um I wasn't even paying attention to the the time period until I started seeing those hairdos <laughs> and then the leather jackets and stuff, you know. Yeah. Because Lionel Lionel looks like he's just you know, I mean, he he's looked like he's just kind of dressed out. He would dress in, in, in any town or small village. Um, so I, I didn't even start to notice it until I started to see some of the hairdos, some of the vehicles. I'm like, OK, you know, um, but but yeah, but, uh, you know, he, no, uh, this this story is timeless. You could tell the story at any point in time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of zombies uh, take over a mansion or actually and that's not even that the scale is really small for most of this movie. Most of this movie is Lionel dealing with the, his mom becoming yeah. essentially she's not a zombie, but she's basically a zombie. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know what else you would call her, honestly. So. So, like, yeah, I mean, she's she, she gets uh, so she gets, you know, she ends up getting bit by this, which is <laughs> this is weird to you that at this zoo where all these families go to, you got regular monkeys and then you got this, this rat monkey and it literally looks like a rat monkey. And I thought the, 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 what was it like a, was it kind of like claymation or what did you think? It was stop still animation, claymation kind of. Um, it didn't look like clay to me. It looked like stop, motion stop, for stop sure. still. It was, you know, it was definitely cheesy and hokey, but I actually really liked it. Cause it, yeah, it looked like if you took a rat and a monkey and you, uh, you know, combine them, this is what you're getting, but it's, but it's, you know, it's, it's in this zoo. Everyone's going to, you know, to, to you know, like any other family or, or whatever it may be, go to a zoo and, and you're going to see the animals. And then you got all, you got the little area where all the monkeys are. <laughs> you got this rat monkey that is, what did it do to the other monkey? Or it like killed it, ripped its, started, ripped its arm off, started eating it. I mean, it was kind of yeah. cool. Uh, it was, you know? a, it was, a, it was a pretty gross oversight <laughs> by whoever manages that zoo. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? It's like, yeah, let's just throw this rat monkey in the zoo and, you know, let's just see what happens. No, it's <laughs> like, it looks ugly, but people think snakes are pretty gross. The snakes are on display. Yeah. The fact that this thing is so ugly is probably like the selling point of this thing. The fact that it's like cannibalistic, <laughs> that's, that's a reason not to, uh, put it on display especially so close to other monkeys i don't know to me it's like one of those things where it should be like uh it should be part of some travel and freak show or something you know instead of at some public zoo where everyone goes to you know but yeah if i saw this if i knew this was at a zoo i'd be i'd buy a ticket to go to the you zoo. know yeah you're right if, if i knew that was there i definitely want to go see it i would not want to see it eat another monkey but i would be down to look at this like little mold thingy yeah it's pretty um cool. but yeah uh so Let's jump back. Um, this movie opens up with a great scene, and then uh, that guy, you know the guy getting the monkey dies. It turns out yeah. that the the guy um, that the people hired, or the I said this way wrong. Yeah. The guy hired people to help him. Yeah. But the guy dies. But the people who helped him uh, <laughs> just took the monkey to where it needed to go anyway. Got paid for. And got it. paid for. It. You could tell they were they felt guilty about it. Like holy shit, what did we unleash onto this town? See, I read it in two different ways though. I read yeah. it. I read it like, um, uh, yeah, they feel guilty for maybe subjecting some random area this cursed monkey. But I also read it like, oh, this doesn't exist anymore where we live. This is we don't have to worry about this anymore. Oh, you know what? I didn't even take it that way. That's kind of a good way to look at it. Yeah, I can see it both. Yeah, now and, that you mentioned it, I can see it both ways. I didn't even think about that. And then they're getting paid for it, but it, <laughs> they're it, getting some money. Yeah, out of I don't it, think yeah. they got paid very much. Like, like the movie made like a big point. Like, look at all this money this guy has, but you only get like half of it. Yeah, for, you only get a portion of it for yeah. risking life and limb. And the guy died for this. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was so funny. Yeah. So so yeah, they get the 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 monkey ends up in the zoo in this in this town. Um, this is this is sort of like anywhere USA except it's not Australia. No, New, New Zealand. Ah, New Zealand. All right, yeah, New Zealand. yeah, it's okay. I mean, if you talk, you know, it's funny if you talk to New Zealanders or Australians, like, do not get us confused. But come on, let's be real. We do at times, right? I mean, I'm it, so it sorry. I'm, it's, I'm it's, so yeah. sorry. But yeah, no, I mean, Pete, you know, obviously Peter Jackson's from New Zealand when he does most of his movies, <laughs> if not all of them, they're in New Zealand. Um, I mean, Lord of the Rings was filmed there. So, so yeah, New Zealand. Uh, yeah. You know, I guess any, any town in New Zealand. Yeah. You know, uh, it reminded Again, me a lot of San Francisco because of the hills, the trolleys. The trolley, yeah. 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 It did. It did kind of have a had a San Francisco feel to it. Um, so we're not introduced to Lionel at first, are we? We're introduced to Paquita. Yeah. Uh she has a infatuation with this character named Roger. He's a very handsome boy. Um uh, I'll be I, I don't know. I've noticed I'm so obsessed with ages in this movie. I don't know how old Paquita is and Lionel is. Um, it seems like they could just as easily be in their twenties or thirties as yeah. they are in their like late teens. No, I I wouldn't think teens at all in this. I, yeah, I'm thinking mid to late, mid to late twenties, maybe early thirties. Maybe Paquita is a little younger. You know, her her parents own the what is that like a little local local uh, market? Seemed like a really small looks like your average like general store yeah like a general store you probably get you know vegetables and and fruits and all your other you know odds and ends and the the reason i make this point is lionel's still living with his mom and we know why he's living with his mom it's because his mom controls his entire life yeah um but for paquita uh she's living with her parents presumably because you know they immigrated here um so maybe she hasn't had the opportunity to explore new housing options or maybe it's easier maybe she's helping out with the family there's just a lot of reason for her to stay yeah the movie's not very clear no. on how old these people are or where this what the circumstances of their living situation is yeah not not really outside of a few details yeah not really know. it didn't seem really relevant you know and, yeah and it the, wasn't and, no. again this story is timeless yeah this is a timeless yeah. story um so we in, were introduced to her um and then we uh go to a scene where she is speaking to her mother her father's just like eating <laughs> yeah, whatever breakfast, meal, whatever the hell he's eating. Whatever meal he's eating. Yeah. While they're doing some prophecy shit. Yeah. Some um, like tarot cards or something reading. Yeah. Yes. Um again, if we're maybe the movies we're we're watching now are just homages to 
you know, people within the industry, like this movie, it feels like Peter Jackson watched a lot of Sam Raimi and watched Tim Burton Abs- as Tim Burton was coming up. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, because this is yes. so Sam Raimi. Oh my God, it is. Yes. You know, uh, at this point, I don't know how much of his filmography he's got to. He's definitely done Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, right? Oh, Sam Raimi at this in the in 90s? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's done uh, Army of Darkness as well, too. I believe Army of Darkness was already done. So so we we definitely have been introduced to to the the evil dead universe and ash and bruce campbell yeah and so yeah so i mean we we you know we we, we had talked about this earlier where we felt you know lionel's character was very much like ash or bruce campbell maybe not as maybe not as cocky as you know as as evil dead went further along in the series but oh absolutely sam sam raimi's written all over this I, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, and, and I don't, and I, I'm not sure how many m- movies Peter Jackson had done up to this movie. So, you know, and maybe, maybe, you know, his film style, maybe he totally mimicked him after Tim Burton and, and Sam Ray, because I mean, it, it is all throughout this movie for sure. Yeah. So this, this scene feels a lot like the scene from, um, Evil Dead, where they're hitting record or not record, but play on the oh down on the, the tape down, recorder, yeah, down in that uh, down in that basement. It's yeah. it's obviously way different. That was very ominous and led to like a really great climax. But this is setting up the movie in a way to where Lionel is the romantic lead to Paquita, yeah, and Lionel's going to go through a bunch of tough trials. In this case, uh, being surrounded by death. Uh, what I love here, particularly, and this is also feels so Evil Dead, is that Lionel is framed as a knight. You know, yes, he exactly is. how he Ash is. is. Yes. Yep. Um, and again, this is he's a the knight in shining armor, and normally I wouldn't like that. I kind of like that here, and I'm not quite sure why yet. But maybe as we're talking, I'll figure it out. <laughs> um. So, yeah, it turns out that Roger is not who she's meant to be with, according to her mother's prophecy with the tarot cards. It's Lionel. And then, hey, guess up? Guess who shows up at the store? It's Lionel. And this is just nice economical storytelling. I'm so into it. I forgot to mention this movie is like a clean 90 minutes. I'm so down for that. I love nice, clean 90 minute movies, especially especially horror movies and especially when. They're putting as many great ideas into every <laughs> single minute as here. possible. Yeah, they they did. They uh, they got a lot out of this. I don't think there's a boring movie, or, or I'm sorry, a boring minute in this whole movie. <laughs> no, no, there's not. Um, okay, so she meets Lionel. Lionel's a bumbling buffoon. Yeah, he's very awkward. Mama's mama's boy. Yeah, you know he's he shows shows up at the at the market or the general store with a, you know, with the list that his mom <laughs> wrote. Um, and then all of a sudden, I mean, because, because Paquita just had this, this reading sees Lionel. It's like, Oh God, this is fate. You know, um, we get the symbol of the crescent moon with the um, star that looks all like a cross. Yeah. yeah. That kind of shows up on the countertop after uh, Lionel does a little mix up. Yeah, so a bunch of stuff kind of fell on the like, countertop. What is he knock down some pencils or pens or something? It's like a candy and like candy yeah, or something, like yeah, pencil yeah, or tape yeah. or something. Um, turns out this is the guy she's meant to be with. She rolls with it surprisingly. Oh, absolutely! Well. Yeah. Like, oh shit! Okay, I was I guess surprised how quick she just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, and it turns out they they set a date more or less. It doesn't happen here. It happens in a scene or two later. Um. But uh, the scenes enter in between those two scenes are basically exposition like expository scenes between him and the mom yeah you yeah. get their relationship yeah yeah um it turns out that the mother is just got hired onto the wwl do you remember what that stands for no it's no. it's something to do some with sort of society or something it's, it was some some, some pres, you know prestigious thing that you know for the town itself or something like that at the very least the the, the mother is very yeah. proud to be a part of it yeah i, I you know i I mean, um, I don't remember what they called it. I mean, I kind of understood the uh, understood the gist of it. Um, I wasn't really focused on the the whole, you know, ward or whatever you know it was more so than the the interaction between the two. And yeah, I mean, but yeah, the the mom is obviously a controlling helicopter yeah. parent. 
Yeah. She cannot stand her son having any sort of independence. No. We get that right away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's totally controlling of her son and it's affected him in a pretty significant way. Um, we can't tell that he loves his mom. I think he does. Um, but it feels very Stockholm syndrome at this point in the film. Um, it almost feels like if he didn't love his mother, his mother would make him love him. And that's kind of where the, the movie has put this character. I don't know if that sounds right to you. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's not a good relationship. It's toxic. Yeah, de- de- definitely. Um, and then, then this, you know, scene right after we go to um, Bikita and Lionel, they make their date. Yeah. yeah. And then... I think what happens next is we go to the zoo, right? Yeah, we go to the we go to the zoo, and yeah, I mean they're definitely having a great time, you know. Like, I mean, those cards were right on the <laughs> right on the money, right? Yeah, crazy on how that works, but yeah, they're having a, I mean, just a fantastic time. I think they they share a couple kisses, yeah. right? I mean, Paquita's really going for it, man. Oh man, she's yeah. I I mean, she's she's ta- she's taking that reading by her mom to heart. Um, and it seems to be playing out really well for her. And Lionel's, I mean, he he seems he seems like he really likes her, really digs her. They share a few a uh, few kisses, of course. You know, okay. mom, mom is around the corner corner spying, you know, spying on them because you know, God forbid, Lionel, you know, meet a woman, leave her, you know, All something. Right, let's let's take a pause for a moment right here. So um, the only reason Paquita has any interest in Lionel is because that symbol popped up on the countertop, right? <laughs> and yeah. the only reason they go to the zoo is because Paquita, you know, asks Lionel out in so many words. Pretty much. And the only yeah. reason the mom gets bit by the rat monkey is because she is spying on the son. <laughs> now, is the prophecy that the mom told Paquita a self-fulfilling pro- prophecy? The fact is, what I'm trying to say is... If the prophecy wasn't told to her, would any of this have happened at all? No, none of this. None of this, <laughs> this would have happened. I, I don't think so either. No. And so we- do not ask your mother a tarot card <laughs> reading ever again, Paquita. Well, what's funny is they is the mother even saw the you know the 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 um the future uh you know the future uh, uh gr- you know it was very gloomy and, and 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 death was to follow i mean it was clearly in those cards and and it was almost like her mom didn't want to oh yeah don't worry about that or ignore that even though it was clear it was there you know go ahead and and continue on with this but you know <laughs> this doesn't look too good in the near future here so yeah so uh the mom does a bad thing she spies on her kid she gets punished for by getting bit by a rat monkey uh it turns out that the real punishment isn't towards the mom but rather lionel who has to deal with the fallout yeah um the mother gets really sick pretty fast yeah and things this is where the movie starts to get really really gross um <laughs> it, it, it delivers on the promise of that opening sequence tenfold well, if you didn't like that opening sequence, then you would not be prepared for the rest of what this movie has to offer. A couple dismemberments is nothing compared to what this movie has yeah. in store for oh, you. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Mother, mother gets sick real quick. Uh, I think the nurse came by, you know, checked her out. She's she's bedridden at this point. You know, um, you can you can clearly see things aren't aren't uh, going too well for her um yeah the the, the <laughs> wound is what starts to be gross right yeah, um yeah was now, that exposed was it like a hole in the arm and it looked like something maybe if she was moving her hand like you could see through it or was it just was it just pus and nasty nasty I, stuff i think it has to do with the disease like the disease made the flesh all moving and later on in the movie we'll see that the 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 rules of this disease are kind of weird yeah, yeah. Because like some body parts won't move at all, but then you'll get like intestines that are, become sentient. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I think this is just part of the disease moving that flesh on its own. But yeah, so she gets yeah. bit. The nurse comes, wraps it up, and then you know the son helps her with it. I think that next morning. But before then, is is that when Paquita comes over? Yeah, Paquita returns the jacket, yeah. and they have like a nice night together um, in the house. Yeah, Paquita, I'm pretty sure yeah. they come. Should they come over and they have sex? Or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. Paquita, Paquita comes by. Um, well, she, Paquita comes. Um, yes, yes, that's true. Yes, she does come by because because he's uh, he seems a bit uh, 
you know, a little preoccupied, of course, with his mom. He knows if 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 mom hears or sees Paquita, you know, she's going to flip out. So I think he he uh, motions her over to the to this like I don't know to the side of the house where there's some like uh like what wood, I guess what do you say like wooden st- steps or something like almost like you see at a tr- in a tree house. She climbs up and they have some interaction and and you know he of course you know uh, I don't know kind of blows her off in a sense because again he's dealing with his mom and he knows how his mom is and then he feels bad and you know. Uh, you know, they, they hug it out. And then I think, yeah, I think the next scene is, is, uh, is them in the bedroom doing their thing. It's not like the movie doesn't really show this. It's intercut with the mom yeah. being sick. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. There's no, there's no, um, the, the, they're not showing any nudity or anything like that. But no, yeah. but I, I love this montage because they're, he's having probably the best like day he's oh, ever yeah. had yeah. despite the issue with the mom. Yeah. yeah. And then it's intercut. With this montage of the mom getting progressively sicker, yeah, and leading to uh, the mom having her own orgasm, where the the wound uh, squirts pus <laughs> at, at the 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 picture of you know Lionel's father, father, yeah, Pat, who's passed, yeah, who's passed. Yeah, it's yeah. real. That's an, that's an important detail. He's dead. Yeah, yeah. Lionel's um, dad is not here. Yeah. So. Next morning, Lionel's super stoked. He's had a great night. Like the world's turning up a new leaf for him. Everything's great. Um, Turns out the mom is still shit. Uh, So he helps her with the wound. And this is where we get to that scene where he's helping her redress it, try to do what he can. And this thing's like pulsing and being really nasty. It's nasty. Yeah. And then, but guess who shows up at the door? (laughs) People from the WLWL. And this is where the movie starts to dip into its little gross out uh, bag of tricks. Mom wants to get pre- prepared for these yeah. people. This is very important to her. Yeah. So she yeah. tries to put on makeup, whatever <laughs> utensil she was using, <laughs> rips the skin off of her face. So yeah. there's a flap of dangling skin on her left cheek. Yeah. She's, 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 uh, she's falling, she's falling apart here. Yeah. Quite literally, too. Quite literally. Yeah. Um, so they. <laughs> <laughs> this movie will not shy away from this disgusting stuff. And I'm <sighs> sorry if any of this makes you queasy. The fact that you're listening to this makes me think you have a stronger stomach. Yeah. Um, so we will get into a little detail when it comes to describing these scenes because I think they're just so fun. Yeah. Um, so the 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 gag to this to this little bit is uh, Lionel pours super glue on the wound and glues the skin <laughs> back onto the cheek. Yeah, yeah. It's so gross. This is, this is like, I think the first time where the movie got like a, a very audible, like, uh, type of thing. I hate stuff like that. You um, know what funny? That didn't bother me. Really? Normally it would. Yeah. No, it, it that didn't bother me at all. It's, it's I didn't when, have a problem with that. Like it was like, okay, you know, whatever. No, that uh, shortly thereafter, that's where I yeah. got grossed out and had a had a problem with when they're sitting there and they're and they're eating that meal, which is what is that all about? It's I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's I think not they're really just important. having a courtesy dinner. Yeah. To, maybe. And then they would talk about stuff, but the mom yeah. is so obviously like out of it. <laughs> oh, she's yeah, she's like that, she's sick. Yeah. Like this the scene couldn't progress how it normally would if she was okay. Yeah. But the thing is about the skin flap, I hate it when something is where it's not supposed to be. <laughs> glue is not supposed to be there. And okay, I know like super glue used to be like a medical suture back in the day. Yeah. Come on, that's not how you fix a skin flap at home, dude. <laughs> I, yeah, don't I tell me otherwise. Um, well, when you're uh, pressed for time. <laughs> yeah. So they have this like dinner, lunch, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the mom is getting progressively worse and she quite literally falls apart. Um, the WLWL person shows up with her husband. Yeah. So there's a dinner of four, Lionel, the mom, the the WLWL yeah. woman and her husband. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the mom at this point is so severely out of it. She's repeating herself. She's repeating just what she's hearing. She's trying to form complete sentences, but can't. And Lionel's just kind of rolling with it. And these two people, the guests, are just kind of, uh, I guess, being ultra polite in a situation they never expected to be in. You know, it's funny, though. It's more so the the wife than the the husband, because he just seemed to be all about the food that was, you know, that 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 uh, was being served. Uh, the, he seemed to be quite focused on that meal versus the the wife who started noticing things that the husband just was oblivious to. Um, but again, Lionel's taking care of everything, you know, right? Which is w- what he would be doing anyways. 
So it's what he always does is takes care of everything. And so mom's sick. And um, I think what they finish the meal, <laughs> the meal. And then what, what is the, the husband say something about what? No custard or no dessert or something yeah, like that. Says no, no pudding, no, pudding. no pudding. <laughs> oh. oh my God. And then Lionel, Lionel brings out that, just that the four big ass bowls of pudding or custard and this might be, um, you know, uh, this might be a New Zealander thing. You know what? You may be right. I don't know yeah. though. You you may be right. It may it may be uh, that something they do in New New Zealand. But uh, to me, I always you know it's like a custard or uh, or a pudding. It's it's you know it's in a small little uh, you know small little dish for me to enjoy. Not this big ass bowl of you know, but. But yeah, the next that that scene, uh, the next scene coming up where the um, let's describe it real fast. Uh, no, they're you, eating, they're oh eating the custard. God. Well, um, I really, I think it's it's mostly the husband. It's really just the husband. He's 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 going to town on on this custard. The mother is eating it because you know when you're a zombie, you just kind of go out, do stuff out of habit. Yeah, she knows she yeah. should be eating it. Yeah. The the WLWL person is just kind of wanting to get through the situation, not really touching it, and Lionel just kind of. Being spectator, hoping nothing serious happens, but stuff does yeah, happen. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the 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 arm with the wound from a <sighs> rat monkey squirts pus into the <laughs> the husband's uh, custard. Yeah, and he he doesn't even notice it. The wife notices it. How does she not say anything to him? I'd be like, hey, hey, darling, uh, don't, don't eat that, <laughs> you know. But because that doesn't lead to a good scene, though. <laughs> yes, yeah, but he eats it. It's just fucking foul, man. Oh yeah, my god! You know, I was. This is like one setup. The movie doesn't pay off. I was expecting this guy to become a zombie. Yeah, so did I. And he doesn't turn into a zombie. No, so I. That's what I guess. That that's what I don't understand. When, especially when it comes to zombie stuff, and and there's certain rules, and it didn't seem like some of those rules uh, applied here. To me, I would think that. If he gets pus in his mouth or he eats pus or whatever, that that would infect him. And he would maybe he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't turn as 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 quickly as if he was, say, bit or scratched or something. Maybe it takes a little longer. But no, we see him later on and he's fine. Yeah. So I was like, oh, OK, you know, I wanted him to become a zombie. Yeah, I thought he, I, I told I, I definitely thought he was going to become a zombie. Uh, uh, you know, looking back on the scene, then it, it really is just for the gross out factor. Pr- pretty much. Like the movie wants yeah. to make you cringe and laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it definitely made me cringe. And I think I laughed, too. <laughs> yeah. I, it's, right. I don't like I could do I can do blood, you know, all day long. Uh, when you get to pus and oh, my God, that 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 shit is nasty. <laughs> yeah, you know? I agree. Um, and then, <laughs> and then immediately after, uh, the mom's ear falls into the custard oh. or the, the pudding and, uh, she eats the ear. Yeah. Doesn't she have an earring? Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. so gross. It's um, nasty. At this point, the wife is, the, the wife is, 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 is seeing all this and she's like, yeah, I'm done with this shit. And she storms out. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so into the movie at this point. I love this movie, but, <laughs> uh, so this is. I always get to this this part in the movie where it's like I don't remember what happens. I think I think the next scene um, um, is uh, is doesn't Paquita come back? You know, come by the house just to kind of check on the mom because she knows you know she knows uh, Lionel's mom is sick and she's bedridden, and Paquita comes um, kind of un- unexpectedly with her dog. And yeah, yeah and so oh the, shit, you're right. <laughs> yeah, so that there's some, there's some, you know, there's some uh, interaction between Lionel and Paquita, uh, but she's looking for a dog, and the dog, of course, is his uh, moseyed up, uh, you know, upstairs to where the mother is, and so they they go up to they go up to to, to look for the dog, <laughs> and at this point, uh, we uh, we see that mom has uh, had a little snack. Uh, <laughs> Which is, I, I love this part because I think there's a, a, a Lionel's pulling the, pulling the, pulling the dog or what's left of the dog or whatever the, you know, whatever part of the dog mom ate uh, out of her throat. And this is actually kind of a cool scene. I kind of liked how they did it because, because I mean, we know it's like a prosthetic head or something, but it looks pretty damn good where as it's pulling, it's like um, it's like becoming bigger. Yeah, I it's like, like that. expanding. Yeah, expanding. And I thought because that was... like what she ate was just so big. Oh, I love that too. I love the exaggeration. Like, how did she fit that in her mouth? Yeah, yeah. And now it's coming out. <laughs> I love that too. And then, and then uh, Paquita just is is grossed out. And what is she says something? 
up something about like your mother, your, your ain't, mother my ain't my dog. <laughs> and then Lionel says, "Well, not all of it." Yes, <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was pretty cool. I uh, like that one. As far as like non sequiturs go, like that's the most this movie does, which is actually pretty funny. Like that scene's actually unique in that way. Yeah, that's like the most like jokey I think the movie ever gets. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, it turns out like that's not a deal breaker for her, by the way. I know, right? It's like well, <laughs> she still uh, wants to be with Lionel yeah, after that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess you know, mother eating a dog, and you know, and versus you know, mother's uh, tarot card reading. I think the the you know the card reading <laughs> trumps it, or um, so. But uh, then I think at this point, Lionel, you know, mother is getting worse. Uh, of course, uh, Lionel is <laughs> definitely you know far from concerned. Doesn't he call the nurse? Nurse think, comes over. Uh, yeah. So is this when um, the mother has another fit? She goes to attack uh, Paquita and then she needs to get a the nurse to come over. Yeah. The nurse comes over and then the, the mom dies. And yes. then the mom doesn't die. She comes back. She's yeah. reanimated. Yeah. Kills the nurse. Yeah. And one, probably one of the grossest killing scenes in the movie. In fact, one of the grossest scenes I've ever seen ever. <laughs> and I love this effect. I know I've seen this somewhere else. Yeah. You know what? The, the, the nurse with... How her head goes back. No, so, the, the, it's for me, it's the, the oh. fingers into the skin of the cheek. I've seen that before. I have too. Um, I don't know where though. And I don't know if it predates this movie or not. But it's it's such a gross idea. What is it? Yeah. I know we're we, going to think of it later. I know we're going to think of it later. You know, my gut is almost telling me, and I know this is wrong. I, I want to say Demon Knight, but I think that's wrong. It's not Demon Knight because Demon this is a movie I've seen not too long ago. Okay. I know this is a movie I've seen Damn recently. It. Yeah, I can't think of it. I can't think of it. But yes, we have seen that yeah. in another I, movie. Damn but it. what we don't see is then her snapping the head back yeah. and like breaking her at the neck. Yeah. Where she's like a nutcracker or something. Yeah. We're like or like a he- Pez dispenser. Yes. Like a Pez dispenser where, you know, the head's um, basically kind of hanging on by like a, you know. Like, just like some tendons in the back of yeah, the neck or yeah. the skin. Which which I have seen something like that before, but that was that was that was after this movie, and that was in one of the uh one of the uh George Romero uh zombie movies. Yeah. Uh I c I wanna say it was Land of the Dead. There's a scene where there's where all of a sudden there's a uh there's a uh a zombie, it looks like it's uh it's headless, and then it and it flips his head back up and then it bites the the victim. Yeah, I actually know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah kind of kind of similar to this, but this was done, you know, uh, this was done prior to that. So this um, movie is just trying to throw out like it just feels to me that these they're, they're, there's a big group of people and they were coming to like Peter Jackson saying, Hey, what if we did this? And if like Peter Jackson got a laugh, they did it. Like there's just so many crazy ideas in this movie. Yeah. Um, this isn't necessarily one of them, but this is like one of those ideas, like how can we gross out our audience? How can we make this really cool kill? And th- like this just succeeds on like every level for me. It's so gross. It makes me cringe. I really haven't seen it before. I know we're talking about seeing it one time before, but that's it. This is still a very unique effect and it still has that same effect. I just hate when something is th- where it not should be. And your finger should not be in a cheek. Yeah. And, 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 and then she snaps the neck. It's yeah. so it's such a clean kill. It's so gross. It's so effective. And you're not really expecting it. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, yeah. I, I love this, that part. This I is one it. of the best kills in the movie. No, it opinion. was. And, and you are right. I, I cannot think the life of me what that's from. And I know we've seen it in, in another movie. And I, yeah, it's going to come to us, of course, later on. Yeah. Um, this, this movie is fulfilling on like the gross out promise at this point. Like this movie is just so gross. And I love it. So, so where are we at this? So at this point, we're, uh, well, at this point, so, I think know, he's got them locked downstairs. Is that right? Um, or is it, has that happened yet? Yeah. I don't know if that's happened yet. I mean, we got, you know, we got mom, we got the nurse. Um, I believe there's, um, well, who else is it there? I think there's, doesn't he, uh, end up, uh, I, I think at some point here, don't we see, uh, is it the funeral? You know, I, I I know he keeps he keeps like injecting you know mom with this with what what, what was it? I it's mean, a tranquilizer. Is a tranquilizer just to kind of you know to kind of keep her under control? Um, I remember she breaks out. Remember yep. she breaks out of the house. Um, I I think she, she gets uh oh at this point yeah she gets uh, uh uh Lionel's over at the at the store talking to Paquita 
you know, she, she asks how, how's your mom doing and, and something like that. And then, uh, and then the mom of course is coming across the street as a, you know, as a zombie and she gets hit, flies through the, through the window. Um, you know, Lionel makes a comment. I don't remember, you know, something about she was feeling better or something like that. But I think she, we end up having a, a funeral for her yeah, at this so point. Cause everyone, you know, everyone thinks, oh, she just got hit. She's dead. And you know, yeah. Um, but in order to pass her off as dead, he's continuing to sneak tranquilizer in her body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at, you know, there's a funeral scene. Not much happens. It's not really. Uh, no, I, you know, hold on a second. I, okay. I, 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 no, do your no, thing, bro. No, hold on. The, the, the funeral scene I kind of liked because again, we get to see Peter Jackson. Oh yeah. Oh, a, I yeah, forgot. Yeah. How do I forget this disgusting <laughs> shit? <laughs> so they yeah. have like. Obviously, a coroner is going to do their thing to make the or Embal the embalmer Embal embalmer. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I knew exactly when I said it. Yeah, um, is going to make the body presentable, but the, the mom's body at this point is so like rotted away. It's bloated. It's disgusting. Doesn't look like a human anymore. They're doing their best, and their best apparently is to have like this rude Goldberg contraption, like like spinning and pumping her body up. It looks like like a balloon animal, you, you like know, underneath a blanket. Yeah. You know what it reminded me of? Huh. It reminded me of the scene in uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, dude, you're so right. Yeah, right? Yeah. It totally sounded like that where he – remember the contraption to make the piece of gum? And it was all these different things and all, you know, different noises going on. And it sounded just like that. And then all of a sudden the piece of gum popped out and, you know. But that's what this reminded me of. <laughs> yeah, and this is like this movie just like it's so silly. It's not taking itself seriously. It's having yeah. so much fun in like the grossest way imaginable. Yeah. Like the, the machine like goes overkill. <laughs> like is like the mom's body is about to burst and her face does kind of like her eyes yeah. pop out. Yes, they pop out. There's yeah. like green goose spilling yeah. everywhere. It goes on Peter Jackson sandwich. I don't know if you saw this, but he takes a bite of the skin. Oh no, I didn't see that part. Yeah, the green goo from the mom's body gets on the sandwich and he takes a bite of it as they're running out. Yeah, what is he? He's like he's an undertaker's assistant or something. Yeah. And it's so funny seeing him. I mean, it's like uh I mean, he just looks so so much younger. I don't even remember if he had any, you know, now he's known for this big old beard, but I don't even, I don't even, I didn't have any facial hair. I just did, I had to like, I, I knew he was in it and, and, uh, and I had looked up if, you know, uh, who his character was, but I had to double take. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, that's him. And he was quite goofy and, but I don't remember the, him eating the sandwich. I swear. Oh, that's, that. uh, that's, that, that could have happened. I don't remember seeing that, but it's possible. Um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, some stuff happens. Lionel ends up trying to put some tranquilizer into the mom's body. Yeah. The mom wakes up and then he gets it into her, but only after he broke through like a window into the service. So everyone saw him with the corpse of his yeah. mom, Li the <laughs> lifeless corpse of his mom. At this yeah, point. everyone is now. Uh, yeah, he's, he's like Lionel he's rockers here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. Can you lead us into the next bit? Yeah, well, I think isn't is this where. Um, Mom has now been buried mm -hmm. and he comes, he comes back, uh, later in the evening to, to the, uh, to, you know, to her grave, uh, her, her gravestone. Um, and he, uh, I, I think the idea is to probably what is it, is this point to dig her up or, I think it was or a, to tranquilize her again? I mean, I don't know what, what that's going to do. Cause she's just going to wake up. So, but of course then, then these, what I think four, four, I don't know what you call them, punk uh, uh, I, know, if this was Japan, you'd call them delinquents because yeah, they're exactly yeah. like Japanese delinquents with yeah. like the leather jacket and the hair. Yeah, the leather, the leather jacket, the 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 hair. They're drinking the you know the the beer. Um, it's not beer, dude. They're shooting like vodka or something. Is it hundred percent? Is it vodka? Because like it came in those like rectangular bottles. What, what was, like what doesn't like besides like vodka and whiskey? Yeah, and I thought for some reason I thought it was I thought it was beer. Um, who dude, knows? These things were huge bottles. Were they bro. okay? Um, you know, of course they, they, uh, you know, they, they, they attack Lionel, uh, they start beating him up in the meantime, one of them's, you know, taking that, that taking a piss on the piss on the mom's grave. And, you know, she, she, uh, she comes out of the grave, attacks him, you know, and some cool, nasty shit is happening at this point. You know, it's like, she's grinding away at his chest. Yeah. You know, kind of like, blend, like you don't really see it. You just see like a whole bunch of blood and him screaming. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, then, you know, I think uh, the other, the other guys, you know, s see this and they start running away. And I think Lionel's running away too, isn't he? And then uh, the, the, the mother throws the, this, you know, this, like you said, this, this, this punk, this delinquent, uh, he, he ends up, uh, 
I think he ends up uh, hitting them, doesn't he? Knocking them all down. No, something like that. They like he gets thrown in front of them, and that stops. Oh, them. okay, stops them, and then, and then the mom know. basically kills all of them. Yeah, yeah, attacks yeah. them, and then they turn into they quickly turn into to zombies. Except you know, Lionel's still okay. Um, and then uh, you know, Lionel is uh, trying to tr- you know trying to uh, trying to get away. And then <laughs> this is this is one of my favorite parts because this uh this this father Magruder uh you know he he sees all this you know hears the commotion and and sees sees all this <laughs> happening and and he starts he starts whooping ass I mean he is chopping fools up. <laughs> I'm I'm smiling so hard right now. This is one of the best scenes of the movie. This is probably for me. This is probably the, uh, my favorite scene in the movie because we're watching know, a zombie movie. Zombie but then movie, there's like kung fu stuff, and there's kung fu <laughs> because you know me how much I fucking you know love old cheesy kung fu movies. Dude, the father is like legit doing kung fu. He is kicking some ass. Yeah. He's kick- and then, and then the, I think this is now one of my favorite lines because I forgot about this line. I kick ass for the Lord. That, that, shit, that shit is classic, dude. What a beautifully oh written God. line. I love it's that so much. fucking awesome, dude. Dude, I was dying laughing when I when we came to that part. Yeah, and he does. He Yeah, he kicks he gets a bunch of ass. Dude, he kicks all kinds of ass. I mean, he is he is he is chopping those fools up. Dude, he's fighting a bench essentially like immortal beans and like three of them at the same time oh, and yeah. he's holding his own. Yeah. He one of them he knocks the legs off. Like he kicks the legs off of him. <laughs> that he shit was kicks cool. both arms off. Yeah. Then he kicks the head off. That shit was Dude. badass. Yeah. That shit was badass. And then and then you're thinking, okay, he's cool. You know, he's holding his own. And then I, I think the I think the head from one of the one of the dudes comes <laughs> comes down and lands on his back, bites him, you know, and it's like, ah shit, you know. And then and then what happens? How does he does the mom throw Throw him, throw him uh, into the into the air, and he in, ends up getting in, impaled on the uh, like on one of the uh, the tombstones. It doesn't Is matter it, like who throws yeah. him, but he gets thrown on top of a <sighs> that statue. Sucked. That was like a bomber. I mean, I thought we were gonna have more of him kicking ass throughout the movie. Yeah, me too. That was exactly what I was thinking. Um, but it doesn't happen, and it kind of sucks. Uh, but it gave us one of the best scenes in probably that, cinema history. <laughs> that this is was, the Citizen Kane of like ass kicking zombie <laughs> scenes. That shit was pretty cool. And then, so at this point, you know, but, uh, okay. So yeah. Lionel is doing a very good job of trying to contain all of this yeah, crazy yeah. shit that's happening. Yeah. So he actually takes their bodies, brings them back to his mom's mansion, and then he kind of just keeps them there, in, in keeps the them sedated yeah. with yep. tranquilizer. Yeah. Not necessarily in the basement, I think, quite yet. Oh, that's But it does happen. <sighs> that's right. I think at this point, he's serving them like eggs with tranquilizer. Just It's basically like eggs with yeah. tranquilizer soup. Yeah. But he has them at the dinner the, the, table. The, in the kitchen. That's right. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. I like, love this scene. Like they're all like a big family and he's, and he, you know, he's just trying to... Uh, yeah, he's trying to contain it. He's trying. He's trying to keep them kind of at at bay, but but yeah, I, oh. it's weird. It's like it's like he's at the head of the table, and then you got. I think at this point you have the mother, the nurse, uh, you know, Father Magruder, and then the one of the delinquents. What I love about this scene is that Lionel knows that this is some pretty terrible stuff. Um, the fact that his mom wasn't taken care of in like quotes, you know, like killed or whatever. Yeah right away has led to a lot of other people dying lionel can't bring it um to himself to destroy the bodies and i'm pretty sure that's like the obvious solution and lionel even knows that but for some reason he still just wants to take care of these people and i think that like the movie doesn't explicitly point this out but this is kind of what i love about lionel's character is he's doing his best in this terrible situation to like so keep everybody happy yeah in some kind of gross way like he's he these are zombies he he knows that in some some sort of way mm. and he's feeding them he cooks eggs for them <laughs> you know he serves them at a dinner table and not in like a chain he, they're like sitting at the dinner table unrestrained yeah yeah and, and and you know if they're if they do something you know like like you know when you when you're at the dinner table and, and you do something that that kind of pisses off your parents and they, they tell you to mind and, and don't do that and watch your manners. And it yeah. kind of seems like this is what he's doing with the zombies. Yeah, exactly. Like he's the father figure now to yeah. like yeah. this zombie outbreak that's happening around him. <laughs> I love that so much. I can't tell you how much I love that because yeah. like in any other zombie movie to be like, okay, this is terrible. 
let's burn the body. And we see that in that one movie. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Which one? Uh, what's the movie where Night of the Living Dead? Uh, where what? the where the body is like burned in the cremate. Oh, like uh, the, uh, that's uh, Return of the Living Dead. Damn, I was so close. Yeah, Return of the Living Dead. Okay. Yeah, Night of the Living Dead would be the. Course. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I, know know now, I know now. I know now. But yeah, they, they yeah. So they they, they in, yeah Return of the Living Dead. They cremate the cremate uh they cremate the body and then the ashes the ashes go into the because you know, like that's that's yeah. like a logical solution to that problem. Absolutely. Yeah. But in Lionel's case, like his brain doesn't work that way. It's like how do I keep everyone happy? Without well, like it destroying everything. Well, it's because he's he's been programmed his whole life doing that for his mom. Yeah. So this comes kind of natural to him, right? Yeah. Like he's he kind of feels like this is what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah, I think I agree with that, but I'm trying to see like the good in it. I think. Yeah. And hmm. and then Uncle, uh, I think at this point Uncle Le- uh, Uncle Les shows up, kind of his. Yeah, we saw him at the funeral. Uh, he sucks. He's a he's a complete douchebag. He's uh, he wants to get at the mom's money. Yeah. And he, he wants yeah, to do yeah. do that through Lionel. Yeah. Want he yeah, wants the money, so he she shows up. Uh, he shows up um, during this scene, but let's describe some of the gross stuff that happens in this scene because we're <laughs> talking about dead or dead alive. Um, yeah, brain dead. <laughs> uh, the, the, the one of the punks because he he did bring one punk to the the house. Yeah, um, this is the one that got like it's his chest all like torn yeah, open. That's all, yeah, yeah. Um, he tries to eat an egg. This the spoon. He's not he's not really good at it. The spoon goes through his his back of the head. You know. Yeah. Yeah, normal stuff that happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the the father, the dead father, who's now a zombie, yeah, fa- Father Magruder, is eyeing the nurse. And <laughs> oh, yeah, he has the hots for the nurse, yeah. <laughs> which is fucking hilarious. Yeah. I mean, because how often, how often in any zombie movie, and I'm sure it's happened. I haven't seen every zombie movie ever made. But I can't think of a single time this has ever happened. The closest is the remake in Dawn of the Dead, where the zombie baby is born. But that's not yeah. between two zombies. That's between two consenting adults that turns into or one of the adults turns into a zombie yeah. and then gives birth somehow to a zombie baby yeah i know it's it's very different but that's like the closest i, I, I think can get there was another it. movie that came out years ago and i never I, ne- I never watched it but i think it was they were already zombies but they were having some sort of relationship and i i cannot that's interesting yeah i, I god i forget what it's called i'm in love with the zon- i don't know some shit like that i never i never saw it mm. um i i read a little bit about it but i but i think they were already zombies and then they had like a relationship and and it was it, and the story is being told from that perspective even though they were zombies i don't remember it came out, say, I, I'm going to guess maybe five, seven years ago, maybe a little longer. I can't remember the name of it. But but yeah, so so uh, so at this point, Uncle 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 Les is, uh, you know, he's he's explaining to Lionel, hey, you know, your mom was going to, you know, leave me what either some money or some property, but she didn't get a chance to change the will. She's dead. This is all untrue. Of course, you know, of untrue. course, it's untrue. She's just a, a sleazeball. So he hears some commotion in the kitchen. Of course, you know, you know, we know it's it's uh you know the the the, the four zombies uh you know they're having a meal and you know Lionel doesn't want Uncle to go in there. So you know I think I think at this point um, Uncle Les says something about you found you found your dad's old uh, I don't know porn stash. Well, at the, the, yeah, they're having sex. The uh, the father and the nurse. <laughs> No, but we they're having they're having very audible sex. It's we, we, it's yeah. so again they are zombies. The nurse has had her head almost fully decapitated, very uh, nearly headless Nick style. Um, the father is dead. These are both zombies. They're both into each other apparently. Oh yeah, and they are very clearly having some. Rough, oh yeah, the, the, oh, rough absolutely. Sex we, in, in we, the dining table. Yeah, we we hear it, but then once once Uncle Uncle Les leaves, dude, Lionel, I I was Lionel gagging. Wants. Knowing what was happening, oh, yeah. I was cringing so hard. <laughs> I was so shocked that the movie was going to this place. Yeah, uh, it's again, so all gross, those, dude. Yeah, all those weird. Again, just, this movie is just packing all the grossest, yeah. craziest, like funniest ideas it can into yeah. like this short ninety-minute movie. Yeah, you know, like nothing's off the table for this movie. Yeah, yeah exactly. Lester's exactly. such a sleaze bag that he just think he's watching bestiality porn that his father left him. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, he, so the, uh, you know, he walks in on that I, shortly thereafter. I mean, this was, this was weird to me. And, and, and I don't know what you thought about this again, you know, and we, we're going to use this t- terminology a lot where we sus- suspend belief, but especially in a movie like this, 
they just get, you know, the father and the nurse just get busy and immediately she's pregnant. I'm like so down for this though. Like I just, I so want to see a zombie. So just every, everything is out the window. You well, know. there's zombies. So like, I, who, I who know, knows I know. How it works? I know, I know, but, but we're just to assume that, yeah. you know, if you're, a, yes. if you got, if you got, if you somehow got infected by a, a, a you know, rat monkey, Yes, it speeds up the process of a pregnancy, so it goes. So it's not nine months anymore, or whatever the, it is. It's it's it's, it's, now, it's, it's like, like sixteen hours. hours. It's like yeah. a couple hours or something. Yeah, yeah. and then so we <laughs> and so we get this. It's so gross. Oh my god, we I get hate this, this so yeah. much. At least we don't see the birth. You know, the movie doesn't go that far. No, but we do see that uh, when uh, Lionel comes back, I think from like his his now probably like daily trip to get tranquilizer. Yes, I think that's correct. And yeah. after having like a run with running with Paquita, he comes back yeah. to yeah. a uh, a a baby that is currently like in like an old like radio or something. Yeah, yeah, like old radio TV or something weird like that. Yeah, radio. I think it's radio because the because he was a. Uh, Lionel was playing the radio for the zombies because they're now in the basement. And I don't know. I mean, he, I guess that was a, a cool thing to to do is maybe play. I'm going to play you some music. You you know, you're you're drugged up. Um, Again, Lionel's very considerate of these guys. Yeah. And I love that about Lionel. Um, but yeah, he comes back to see uh, this zombie baby. And uh, we now live in an age of baby Yoda. Um, how do you think this compares to baby Yoda? I, yeah. Not as cute. No. More cute. No, no, definitely not. I, I, no, this this baby in its own no. weird way is pretty cute to me. I love how like this baby just like finds people getting hurt very funny to like an extreme degree. Yeah. It, like it, it slowly gets ramped up yeah. over the movie. There's yeah, this, this baby's fucked up. And <laughs> apparently that's because it's a zombie baby. Is that the only reason why? Does it have something to do with like the rat genes that got passed to this maybe, baby through like this disease or something? Maybe. I don't know. But this baby is delightful and like the most macabre way yeah but yeah there is yeah there's it's weird i mean when you picture a if you were to go okay i this you is know, like a garbage pail kids almost yeah it, it, it does kind of look like that but if you were to go yeah yeah um you know however you would picture a zombie baby this is what it would look like it would look like 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 i would have you know you could easily see this in in any other movie either before or after and say yeah that's that's the zombie baby i actually like this zombie baby more than i like dawn of the dead zombie baby even yeah, more and yeah. we actually see this baby way more than we saw oh, dawn of we the see Deads. we see it a lot uh and it, it is as as it goes a little further in the movie it, it becomes kind of kind of slapstick kind of kind of humor yeah i a wish lot, this, lot of, i wish this baby had a name it doesn't get a name <laughs> i don't think it does i yeah. think it's just yeah it's baby zombie so yeah we got baby zombie well, what happens after this? This is uh, oh, this is <laughs> this is when Lionel decides again. The theme of this is he, he he decides to take care of this baby. He puts he puts it in the stroller. He's trying and he's to taking help. It, he's taking it to the park and he's watching what other what other mothers are doing with their babies and he starts doing this. And then this yeah. is like one of the top five scenes for me. Like he's he's <laughs> he's, he's he's mimicking the moms on how to properly take care of a baby. It's not working. Mind you, there's there's barbed wire in, yeah. the, in the stroller. <laughs> um, it's not working. This baby is unparentable, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then what? It, it climaxes into him like the, the losing control of the baby and him having to beat the baby into submission. Yeah. Baby doesn't die. In, in front of in front of all these moms and they're gasping like holy shit. But what's funny is like they're like looking at it and they're gasping. But then it's like oh yeah. Again, it's part of the whole slapstick thing. It's like okay, well, then he just goes about his business after he's after he's basically punched the baby. He's put the baby in like some sort of sack and slammed it on the ground, and then he just rolls on out, makes a little comment, and leaves. Yeah, Lionel. <laughs> I think they recognized him. Like they recognize Lionel. Lionel's like this nutcase now that they were just letting him have his baby episode, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, that didn't work out for Lionel. Uh, what happens next? Oh uh, gosh. Uh, so, so they're, so he's back at, back I at, think at yeah. this point we also see that, uh, um Paquita is now dating Roger. Well, yeah, because I happen, think this happens now, right? Yeah. This because he's yeah. when he's slinking off with the baby in the bag. That we see them uh, walking for the first time. Yeah, we do. Because, yeah. I mean, a little prior to that, you know, because Lionel's so um, preoccupied with what's happening 
you know, in his basement with, with, you know, all these, all these zombies, he has, you know, he has no time for Paquita. You know, she, she, I think she got upset. Um, and there's like a, I think there's a, there's a scene where, um, uh, Paquita confronts him in, uh, across the street from the, um, the market. And there's, they engage and then something happens. And then that Roger guy, you know, comes in and, you know, and essentially like, like he thinks he's coming to her rescue and it's like, but yeah, a little later on, uh, yeah, he, you know, while he's on the stroll with the baby, he sees Paquita and and Roger. Is that his name? Roger? Yeah. Yeah. And, and Roger is, uh, he's telling his boring ass and I'm thinking because it's New Zealand, he's telling his boring ass rugby stories because rugby is, is super popular in, in New Zealand. So he's telling his, his boring rugby stories, but Keita's is kind of, Oh my God, you know, seriously, dude, you ever shut up? So, yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then, um, I think, uh, uh, I think at some point here soon, uh, uh, Lionel is getting some more of the tranquil, the tranquilizers. He comes home. We haven't and, even talked about the guy supplying him the tranquilizer. The, yeah, the whole so this is this is, some this, Nazi, is this is nineteen fifty seven. So this is like some escaped Nazi yeah. from like Nazi Germany. He even has a swastika on his arm. <laughs> and this guy is just stereo, stereotypical like zombie or I'm sorry, stereotypical Nazi uh evil genius type dude who's now yeah. just a, a vet. Oh, you know, it's almost like a, almost like a mad, kind of like a mad scientist, but not, you know, yeah, exactly. Not. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. So yeah. 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 He's, he's supplying them all these, uh, all these tranquilizers to, to keep, uh, you also, know, this guy drools for some reason. Is that explained? I don't like, no, do you that's know. Not that, no, but no. do you know why that happens? I have no idea. Just because he's just some weird Nazi. <laughs> maybe they felt him drooling just added to the character. I uh, made it, made him more crazier more weirder i i'm not sure again like this movie is just throwing out ideas man yeah and it they, they almost all work like yeah. this is so i'm so into this yeah because i mean i noticed the drooling but i didn't like well why the hell is he drooling i really didn't i mean i don't know yes because it's gross i don't it, know it's his gross it's not super gross not as gross as some of the other stuff i'd take drooling over this all over the pus stuff but, but dude have you ever like woken up from sleep and you're oh, like yeah. in a pool of drool Oh yeah, that's what oh. drooling reminds me of. And so when I see people drool, I'm like, "Yeah, that's gross. You're gonna yeah. get it all over. He's gonna be stinky." Uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I would like again. I would take. I take a a puddle of drool over a puddle of pus because we see a lot of that shit going on. Okay. But uh, Lionel gets back. He sees the door to the basement's open. Um, yeah, Uncle Les. Uncle Les. I keep wanting to call him Uncle Lester. Lester's well, Lester's probably his name, yeah. right? Well, I don't I mean, know. Lester, maybe... I'm sorry for the Lesters out there, but Lester for me always just has like this like sleazy type of name for it. <laughs> I wonder why that is. I don't know. Oh, it's because it sounds like molester. Oh. Which which <laughs> was which was actually a joke on uh that one show from Oh my god. Oh my god! I can't think of the show. Yeah, it was on HBO. One, it's gonna win a bunch of awards. Season two just wrapped up. I talked to you about it. I'm so. Oh, Succession. Oh, Succession. Oh, okay. I got there. Yeah, yeah, that was a joke on Succession. That was? Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, they called. They called, uh, they called him Uncle. They called him Mo, for because his name was Lester. So Mo Lester. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. that's kind of fucked up. Anyway, Succession is a good show. Uh, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, so I so Lester, less, less, less. I mean, more than likely, yeah, it's he, probably it's he probably sees short the for dead Lester. stiffs downstairs yeah. in the basement. Confronts <laughs> Lionel about it. Says, "Hey, man, give me that money." And then <laughs> and Lionel, the house. yeah, and house, Lionel's like, "Money, and we're good." I'm not gonna say shit because he goes and. Was he was he actually calling the police or was he fake calling the I police? I assumed he was. It was good acting, otherwise. <clears throat> yeah, it was it was pretty believable. I mean, Lionel definitely believed it because he, you know, he was he was quick to to give the house and the money away. Yeah, you know. So then at this point, uh, uh, you know, Les is Les is ecstatic because uh, hell, I got this big ass mansion and I got all the money, you know. Um, and so he fights what the whole, it seems like the whole fucking town over for a party. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then shit goes crazy. And we have like a, <laughs> like a 30 minute, like act three. This is like some real James Cameron shit. Yeah. Cause James Cameron says a lot in his movies where it, like, it's just like set up, set up, set up. And then like 30 minutes of payoff. And that's exactly what this movie does too. It's like 30 minutes of just 
pure craziness you know this and it's all payoff it's so amazing you know it kind of kind of i mean also can we like point out the lawnmower this shows up in just a very quick scene right when he meets uh kind of foreshadowing yeah where the mom tells him to go mow mow the lawn lawn, he's very proficient with the lawnmower he knows how to fix it yeah and we do see a shot of the lawnmower's blades when he's i love that i love that too it's again it's set up set up it it sets up perfectly yeah i love my setup this is a good setup it's very subtle you wouldn't think twice about it but we'll see it here in a bit in this last uh this last uh, section of the movie um but yeah les throws a party invites fucking everybody everybody i mean and what exactly leads to the chaos so downstairs after paquita ditches roger to go see what's going on at his house uh, she sees him in the basement and then she basically encourages him to after she sees what's fucking happening yeah. with these four bodies yeah and seeing what lionel has done to like try to keep everything like somewhat okay you're like well this has to go yeah and then he do the right thing man yeah he yeah, yeah he poisons them thinking that's gonna help yeah. yeah and you know let them be at rest and then he buries them thinking yeah. he succeeded um obviously that's not the case Turns out uh, it's animal stimulant. <laughs> I know, which right? Which is basically steroids for zombies. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. 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 And they come back bigger <laughs> and stronger and then yeah. fucking kill everybody. Yeah. Zombies are already fucked up to begin with. But when you have zombies on steroids, that's yeah. like, oh, that's another fucking level, man. <laughs> so this movie is just pure chaos. Uh, how do you want to talk about this? Oh, scene? my God. This is, <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, this is just. There's a lot time. of storytelling happening in this scene. Yeah. I mean, or in the in this last, last section of the movie. And a lot of it's like immediate setup followed by payoff, almost immediate payoff or payoff a little bit later. And there's just like a slew of that for like the next 30 minutes. So I don't know how we want to talk about this. Where do we start with it? I mean, there's just so much happening. Right. Uh, I mean, first I mean, of all, the the zombies come out and basically just start chowing down on everybody. Yeah, they they break out of the basement. Yeah, and just immediate, immediate. Oh yeah, there's some crazy kills there's some happening. Fucking, there's people some- are being torn apart. Uh, people are having their heads ripped off. Uh, people are having like, uh, like hands going oh. through the back of their their throats and yeah, the, in, from when the mouth. The, yeah, one of the, one of the guys punched the girl right through the back of her head. And yeah, her. that was cool. I love the scene where uh, where they rip. The whole f- the face off, and yeah, he, that was fucking cool. I would th- I would thought that we were gonna cool. see more of that zombie, but maybe that was just too hard of an effect to do on multiple days. We saw it like one other time, yeah. But I thought that was fucking. That was cool. a cool effect. That was right? a cool ass effect. Uh, yeah. Deb, did you see the Silent Hill movie? No. So oh, if I did, oh, maybe once, but I don't remember. There's a scene where this character called the Pyramid Head, who in the games yeah. is like some like super creepy figure. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the movie, he's like all jacked up and roided and like seven feet tall. I remember that, yeah. He like picks up a woman and like grabs her by like the chest or something and just rips her entire skin off of her body and like throws the skin at the church door. And that's like exactly what this scene reminded me of, but yeah. just pertaining to the face. <laughs> yeah, It's so gross. It I was- hate it when skin leaves the body. Yeah, I, I, it was cool. I didn't, I didn't mind it at all. I thought it was it just, it was kooky. It was fun. It, you know, it just, it, it fit with everything that was happening. And there was so much, it was almost like you wanted to like, like stop it and then rewind it a little bit just to make sure you weren't missing other stuff that was maybe happening in the background. Cause there was so much stuff to, to you know, to yeah. try to follow. So like, like I said earlier, where it's like Peter Jackson and company are just, you know, here's a cool idea. Can we do this? And they're like, I like that too. Let's do it. Except on steroids for like this last 30 minutes. It's like, like, can someone come up with like a cool, funny idea that we can do and let's film it and shoot it and put it in the movie. That's what this entire last bit feels like. Cause there's inventive kills going on like every few seconds. <laughs> there's some cool shit happening. Yeah. And this is also where the movie gets like probably the most gory, but not necessarily the most gross out. You know, there's a lot of gross shit happening, but at this point you're probably like, desensitized at least somewhat to yes. everything that's happened yes and for me like the most gross shit happens when like it happens to like a normal human being so like when uh that man eats the pus that's really gross that's but <laughs> yeah, that when you see been. like a zombie chow him down on another like human yeah. like i'm a, kind of okay with that you've seen that a million a million times. times especially like when they're when they're grabbing the intestines that's been done so often yeah i mean you see you saw that in uh, a dawn, dawn of the dawn, dead yeah, dawn yeah. of the dead uh, like yeah. 20 years prior yeah um 
So yeah, this is just kill, kill, kill for the longest time. Paquita, Les, Lionel are all doing their best to stay alive. Um, and they do do a pretty good job of it. Uh, another kill that I quite liked was the the zombie whose head gets like impaled by a light bulb and then her her head turns into a light bulb yeah. and it's just like it lights up like bright that orange was it was cool that. it was cool and it just it looked good that's the thing it was like it's like yeah we we know this movie is is over the top and and, and crazy and cheesy but the stuff looked good it looked really cool the effects like look really good in this movie um if you're down for like cheesy stop motion effects like yeah. with the rat monkey yeah that's like maybe the only thing you wouldn't like but i fucking love that i actually thought that yeah i liked that um, it, was, it was cool yeah and then like yeah like all the, like these are all practical effects in fact there's only uh, one like mistake quote unquote that i saw and that's because you're able to see towards the end of the section where less is dead killed by the mom and his head is just like being suspended upwards by his spine i can see like a wire oh in you the saw background. the wire oh i didn't see you know what that reminded me of it reminded me of the thing yeah yeah uh -huh. right Again, this movie loves its yeah. references but it's not like night of the creeps where it's like hey look what i'm doing <laughs> yeah you yeah, know yeah and it's so it's so like blatant but yeah no the 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 uncle the uncle it just it reminded me of uh, of the thing and 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 the and like you said practical effects I, I CGI, I can't stand it. I understand why it's used nowadays, but I will take practical effects any day of the week. I the, love shit like this. I'm I'm fine with CGI most of the time when it's used when it's used well. Um, but with practical effects, there's like this added benefit of actors being able to react to everything happening on screen. So when you're like throwing buckets of blood at your actors well they're reacting to that yeah. when they're getting limbs thrown at them and like silicon limbs thrown at them <laughs> like they're getting hit by those things you know like <laughs> there is something tangible about special effects that is yeah. it's hard to replicate in cgi yeah especially because you know this is happening to the actors right yeah oh um, my god and there's a ton of shit happening to the actors oh, in this movie this is just and, and especially you know this last this last 20 30 minutes there's so much happening i mean there's you, you know, everyone is dying. They're 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 coming back. They're coming back to life, and now they're zombies. So the whole damn mansion, minus I think, you know, Lionel, Paquita, and, and Uncle Les, and then like one girl that Paquita's trying to keep yeah, alive. she's trying yeah. She's, I think her name was Maria or something. Is it Maria? Yeah. I don't know. That, that sounds about Doesn't right. Matter. Uh, but yeah, she's trying to look out for her because I think they end up they end up she's in the in the in the a pantry. Yeah, there she's hiding out in the pantry. She hears something. She goes to stab it, and this is girl, and and she doesn't. She, I don't think she ends up stabbing her, but no, this is just another gag in the just movie. Just kind of like a gag. She's in like the movie. she's like stabbing tomatoes or something. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but yeah, she's so she's got she's trying to take care of her the whole the whole time while all this shit is happening, and and we got zombies everywhere. We got Uncle Les is kind of a look. We we already established he's a douchebag asshole scumbag, but he kicks some ass. He kicked some ass in that. I don't know if it was in the kitchen, but he was chopping. He was chopping fools up. I mean, he was chopping all kinds of zombie ass. I love that. Yeah. First of all, he does before he even gets to the kitchen. Yeah. The kitchen stuff happens. And then Paquita tries to run away for some reason. I think it's like when Lionel's now dangling from the ceiling. We're going to be jumping around a lot in this. last. Yeah, because it's so much. Yeah. It's this. This last section is crazy. But I love the scene where Les is like, you just see Les. You know, yes. there's like 30 zombies coming at him. <laughs> yeah. It's like a profile shot of him with like an, like a cleaver and something else. Yeah. And he's just like chop, 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 chop. I love the lighting. I love the framing. I love that Les is just a master chef of killing zombies. This is yeah. so cool. I love this so much. And did that did that not spank of Sam Raimi? It, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. Because Sam Raimi loves his extreme shots, yeah. his extreme lighting. And just like this wackiness in a scene, yes. it, like you know, like in Spider Man Two with the Doc Ock and the and in the surgery room, you know what I'm talking about? Yes, yeah. Where the arms come to life yes. and just fucking kill everybody. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I love yeah, this yeah. so much, man. No, I fucking love this. Even though I hated Uncle Les, I fucking love this. You kind of root for Les you because he's just so here. good at killing zombies. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like early on we had Father, you know, Magruder kicking ass, and now we got Uncle Les kicking ass, and these were some of my favorite fucking parts in the movie. I just love shit like this, and so and so. Gosh, I mean, where else do we go? I mean, we got oh, at this point, Lionel's up in the isn't Lionel up in the attic? 
Lionel has somehow gotten to the attic yeah. because, you know, there's that biker zombie, that delinquent zombie. Yeah, the delinquent. The yeah. punk zombie, the punk whatever. Zombie. <laughs> um, at this point, like the punk zombie is missing his legs. And and another great thing about this movie is that the intestines come to life sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. like the the the, zomp, the punk zombies intestines come out of him as he's fighting Lionel in the tub, and then as Lionel is escaping up through the bathroom ceiling into the attic, the zomb the the intestines become sentient and they somehow get placed on the sink and they look at themselves and it's like yeah. they're seeing themselves for the first time, <laughs> kind of like a baby or a cat would yeah. when they see themselves in the mirror. Like, oh yeah, that's me and I exist. <laughs> do, do you hear this though? When we're talking about this shit. If people are going to listen and go, what the hell? If they've never seen this before, it just sounds so crazy. You have to see this. If you have some, if, if you're listening to us and you have not seen this movie, please do yourself a favor. If you can stomach <laughs> gross out stuff. Uh, in fact, if you can laugh at gross out stuff, this is the movie for you. If you can stomach it to a point, just please watch it. Yeah. This is one of the most inventive horror movies I've ever seen. And I love this movie to death. It's funny. It's yeah. not really scary, but you're kind of here more for the, the comedy and the gross outness. This movie is intentionally trying to make you cringe. And it does that with a plump. <laughs> yes, it does. So, but yeah, oh, man. he gets uh, into the attic. The he's he's running from the intestines. At some yeah. point, the intestines grab hold of him, and he like crashes through the ceiling. No, but remember, well, let's don't forget the scene. Um, this is kind of important because um, he uh, knocks over a, like a well, like a hope chest. Yes, and so and, we're and, finally getting yeah. back to the to and he's story. looking through pictures, and he sees his you know his mom and his dad, and he's he's starting to kind of flash back and. And, uh, you know, remember some stuff. And then, um, he, he sees, a he sees this, he sees a, uh, basically a, a corpse and it wasn't the corpse in a dress. Corpse yeah, was in it, a was, dress. it was a skeleton of, yeah. uh, his, his father was having an affair. Yes. Mother caught them, kill a uh, drown, the father and drown the, the, the woman he was having an affair with. Of course, mother this whole time and Lionel was what was he maybe two three four i he was he was a toddler and he witnessed this but but of course over time he confused it he thought he had had something to do with his father's death so you know mom of course went along with that forever you know because she's got this you know she's got she's got her her, her son underneath her uh you know her, her fingernails here yeah you know controlling him but uh but he 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 figures this out uh remembers it but yeah, he I think he crashes through <laughs> crashes through the uh crashes through the the ceiling. Um he's is he is he being is he hanging by the the intestines by this time? He's, or, not, he's never hanging what, what by is the he, intestines. What he's is he hanging, hanging by, by like some it's a he's cord, hanging by like cord cord an electrical cord? Yeah, electrical cord. Because this is like cord. the same right. cord yeah, that yeah. brings the the light bulb zombie. That's right. Into that's like right. the ceiling. You know? Yes, that's right. I forget, yeah, yeah. And then the I think the the intestines uh they cut they come down the the electrical cord though they kind of they kind of maneuver their way down yeah and he's hanging there uh shit's still going crazy at this point i think uh, paquita is still uh, she's still okay and we I, will we get a fake out of her getting bitten but oh. it just turns out she's being <laughs> bitten, bitten by like dentures dentures and, <laughs> and that was in another movie too i love that because this is like the, the movie doesn't yeah. do like a lot of these like silly jokes very much there's yeah. like the, the third one i can think of the one was like the dog the other one's the tomatoes and the other one is this yeah and it, the, the movie's just being goofy and it, it's working for yeah. me yeah yeah <laughs> because you're like oh shit because no, really, i love paquita yeah you like her and you and you you know you wanted them to end up together and then and then yeah so you know, because he sees this and he's like, oh, you know, shit. And then, yeah, it's just it's just a zombie with dentures. And so she's OK. So uh, and then, you know, shit is shit is still happening. All kinds of crazy stuff is still going on. Right. He while he's still dangling from the ceiling. Um, you like, know, none of this stuff is super important. This is just kind of no. like the movie being crazy. Yeah. And then eventually we're like moved in a position where Les is confronted by the mom. And then Lionel uh, goes outside to grab like the lawnmower. And I think these scenes happen simultaneously where Lionel goes to town on like a group of zombies oh and just God. lawnmowers into death. Dude, I mean, I don't know how th it was. It was most of them that were that were in this. Everyone that was at the party that got, you know, whatever built a uh, bit killed, whatever they all they all they all came back to life. And I mean, uh, just a house full of these things. And he and he comes through the front door with this lawnmower 
and just starts, I mean, no pun intended, starts mowing them down. Yeah. And it's just carnage, right? It's it's pure <laughs> unadulterated <laughs> carnage. It's it's very fun. Lionel just like mowing these guys down for a few minutes. Um downstairs, uh uh Les is getting killed by um like this giant monster of a uh, of mother i was i'm forgetting her name Do, she is named right i want to say vera does that vera? sound right i honestly don't remember but most of the time you either says mother or mum, yeah. which is which is uh which is common in new zealand to call your your mother mum. um so uh but i but isn't there a there's there uh, are there there's are, one more cool scene though isn't there a this 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 maria girl she's now been I think she turns into a zombie, but isn't there a scene where the baby bursts through her? That's so funny. I like, was going like, to mention that. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I, what does he do? Like he like rips open her, her head or, and comes, comes out. Cause this baby's pretty cool. I mean, cause I like we, don't, the baby. we don't talk about some of the other like slapstick stuff the baby's doing with uncle Les, but that shit was kind of funny. Yeah. That shit was, that was, that was, yeah, was kind of funny. the baby tortures Les by like, just fucking with him. Cause, cause He's like is, hitting him with like zombie legs and stuff, like in the balls. And he and and knowing that this the whole shit is shit is going wacky inside this mansion. Les is chasing this baby down. I'll be damned if I'm gonna let this baby get the best of me. Yeah. <laughs> While everything else is is going south, you that know. actually leads him to the mother, right? I think so. I think so yeah, and, and yeah, the baby has probably like top three grossest kills in the movies. Where you're right. He like goes through the Maria's like the back of her skull, yeah. opens up the front of her yeah. face, yeah. peers out of it and is like controlling her. It's so gross. It's very cute in a way because like the baby's having a real good time. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is so nasty. Again, I don't yeah. like things where they shouldn't be. And a zombie baby should not be in someone's <laughs> face from like the inside. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I like this part. It, but, it's also Maria doesn't really deserve it. Like her biggest crime in this movie is dancing with Les. She does not deserve oh, to go out yeah, that way, dude. Yeah, no. Yeah, they did it wrong on this. But you know what's? Let's talk about this for a second. L- l- let me know if you think this comparison is is maybe accurate. You know, with because because we, we we've talked about Sam Raimi, we've talked about Ash and Evil Dead, and you know, would you would you agree that this lawnmower is kind of like Lionel's boomstick? You know, you know how hundred percent. Right. This, I wouldn't say boomstick. This is the well, chance on the arm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There you go. This is this yeah. is where like Lion like because like in Evil yeah. Dead, it's like this everything's clicking into place. Ash doesn't have an arm. He needs he needs two arms to efficiently kill zombies. Yeah. So he uses the nub for a, for the chance. Yes. You know this Great is Ash comparison. solving yeah. solving yeah. a problem, fucking in the best way possible. Yeah. Making cinema history while he's doing <laughs> it. Dead or dead alive. Same thing. How do I most efficiently take out the bodies of all these zombies? And that's the lawnmower. <laughs> yeah. And then he, he like the movie doesn't like do the the Sam Raimi montage, which I now more associate with like Edgar Wright, because Edgar Wright does the exact same yes, thing. Yes, he does. Um, yeah. Where you've got the suit up montage. Yeah. Um, we don't see that, but we do know that he had to like get a rope and essentially make the lawnmower into like a reverse backpack. So he can just always have it attached to him at all times, and he can't lose grip of it. I would have loved them to to have had that little montage. Yeah, because he, he that, did work. That, that would that would have been pretty cool. Yeah, that would have been I, that would have been even like that, almost like the 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 cherry on top, like his know? hero moment, like the hero yes. moment almost. Because doesn't he come through the door and there's this there's this backlight? I you know, so. I think so. If it's not there, I imagine I'm it. almost positive there is, which is which is again, it's very, very evil dead, Sam Raimi, you know, Ash. It's like this this moment, and it's this, yeah, this the door, the front door opens up. I have the lawnmower and there's this light, you know. Yeah. So but uh but yeah, so I mean uh we uh, we have to talk about the mom. I mean, now mom is I mean, she's she's oh, fuck, she's a she's like a I mean, essentially a, a, a zombie monster, right? Yeah, I mean, she's, she's some, like weird Cronenberg esque, like yeah, just this is weird. this is so many different things that are kind of concocted here. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 real crazy, it's way over the top. We got uh, I mean, I think we got saggy boobs. But she's enormous. I mean, yeah. she's huge. It's, she has like a like she kind of looks like a bird. 
yeah, with I'll, like the neck is like protruding outwards and she's got like these giant like chicken legs almost like chicken legs like if you were to eat like a drumstick kind of legs like they're just really fat <laughs> um she looks like a dinosaur and a bird or something it's, it's, it's so gross it's all kinds of weird things like just meshed together uh and she has one of the best kills in the movie where she kills less we don't actually see it we just see like the silo like yeah, a shadow where cool. she's like ripping his spine out of his yeah, body that was cool that's fucking dope that's cool that's, yeah. cool. that's cool like a lot with this movie does a lot where i'm just like that's cool dude <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know i love it i, I do like I, that's I, gross so that's super cool good idea guys thank yeah. you for putting it on film for me yeah <laughs> so mom is um you know mom mom is, mom is the big boss yeah mom's yeah yeah mom's the super the super duper you know zombie monster and yeah, she's know. the big bad we need to kill to end the movie yes yep. yeah so she's 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 chasing uh you know, so 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 at this point, you know, I think the only ones that are 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 alive and human would be Lionel and Paquita, right? I think everyone else is, has met their demise. So mom, of course, still, you know, even though she's dead and and zombie monster, she still has this jealous thing, you know, uh, like she did earlier in the movie that really caused all this. You know, I'll be damned if Paquita is gonna, you know, take my son or something like that, you know, and starts chasing him. And don't they end up on the top of the? I think they end up on the top of the roof, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what happens here? Uh, I think, uh, I don't know. That I, I think doesn't. This is where like magic saves the day because uh, um, the mom is trying to kill Paquita who's dangling from the rooftop. Yes. Yeah. Lionel gets eaten by the mom. Oh my God. That was kind of cool too. How through the stomach. Through the stomach. It, it, it opens up again. So interesting. Because we mentioned the thing, remember in the mm. thing where you know where the, he's doing the defibrillator. Yes, and the yeah. stuff. Yes, and the, here we are again. You know, this could just be a coincidence. I think not, though. You know, because we have so many different things happening with you know the you know Tim Burton ish, Sam Raimi ish. You know, you know who knows? I mean, Peter Jackson could have been a big fan of John Carpenter, uh, but that's what this reminded me of. It opens up and essentially swallows them swallows him whole paquita's still dangling but yeah but he ends up uh, he ends up killing her with the the, the necklace the necklace with yeah the, the, the crescent moon yes. and the star symbol on it yeah that saves the day yeah kind of anticlimactic all things considered but it's kind of cool because she just like kind of like turns into a big old pile of goo like it just splurts from her stomach in like this really <laughs> gross way it's cool yeah, but it's not the coolest killer thing no. in the movie, like by far. No, not at but all. But you're happy that Lionel and Paquita get to, you know, stay alive and have a good romance at the end. Yeah, like I mean, they're they, going to be together. Yeah, I mean, they kind of, uh, you know, once once mom's, you know, once mom's, I guess, officially now dead, um, no, no more her coming back. They kind of, uh, you know walk out into the sunset kind of sort of right you know what i really wish is that like lionel said because the house is burning down at this point i'm like <laughs> yeah. just let it burn <laughs> just let it burn let yeah. it burn please <laughs> let it burn yeah because does it the i wish he said that because that home is so like representative of all like the troubles he's had because this is mom's house yeah right you know yeah. that, that's where he grew up and uh, you know had all this this tox- toxicity in his life it's also the place where all the zombie bodies are and like any zombie body that might still be kicking would be destroyed by the fire. So I'd be like, I thought he'd say some of the firefighters for those two reasons, but he doesn't. But you know, the fact that they're together, they're moving away from this whole mess. And that, you know, that apparently this does not bother Paquita in any way no. is, is something that I'm like super happy about. This is a nice little cherry on the top type of ending. Yeah. They get to live heavily, happily. Yeah. They, they kind of roll off into the sunset, uh, you know, and, and, and I, you know, I, this isn't, this isn't said, but I just kind of think they probably just, you know, pack up and <laughs> let's get out of this town. Yeah. You know, uh, does the baby die in the blender? Is that how the baby dies? I know the baby, did the baby end up dying in the blender? Cause I know Paquita was blending up some, some zombies. Yeah. Maybe the, maybe the baby ended up getting it. Cause I know there was a scene where the the baby was getting ready to fall from the ceiling into the into the blender, but I don't think it, it did at that point. So it it probably did. I mean, we know the baby met you know uh, died and right the baby died. 
I mean, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure the baby died. <laughs> I'm going to have to rewatch this movie, guys. Yeah. I'll do yeah. this for you. Yeah. So that we can make sure the, the you know, the, well, there wasn't, there wasn't, there's no like, you know, again, this is, this is prior to all the, you know, the, the end, the end credit scenes. <laughs> we don't, we don't sit through the, through all the credits and then the, we see the zombie baby. That's not the case here. No. So, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I don't even ask this. I mean, you know, er everyone that's listening, you would definitely recommend this. Uh, you can tell I've been smiling. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I know you. <laughs> as, I know I, you. as I've been, it was, we've been talking. I love this movie. If you haven't seen this and you're at all interested, watch this. This is like, it should be at the top of your list. The fact that I've gone my entire life without seeing this movie is a is a problem that I will bring up to my dad off mic. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, I love. Yeah, I love this movie. Uh, it, it how is. do you feel about it? Oh, I. I this is your I, second yeah, time watching yeah, second it. Second time watching it. I, I enjoyed it. And, and and you know what what I would stress to people is 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 watch it and stick with it. Don't 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 turn it off after you know a little bit because I, maybe it's. Maybe you feel it's too too jokey or hokey. No, get give it time because it's it's gonna get good. It's gonna be and it's fun. So I would absolutely recommend it to people. Uh, also, uh, Baby Yoda has nothing on Baby Zombie. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm putting that out there. I still haven't seen Baby Yoda. <laughs> I gotta I gotta check out. Uh, I gotta check out Baby Yoda. Everyone's everyone's talking about uh, Baby Yoda. Gotta, yeah, the fact that you haven't seen The Mandalorian just to check out Baby Yoda is kind of a crime. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, you have to at least be in the conversation, you, you know. I check know. out Baby. Check out The Mandalorian just for Baby Yoda. I know. I have to. Well, uh, I think that's going to do it uh, for today's episode. Um, you know, thanks uh, thanks again for listening. Uh, you know, we hope you come back uh, next week. Uh, I think we're going to be discussing uh, 1981's uh, Hell Knight, uh, starring Linda Blair. Sounds good. <laughs>